Welcome in, Monday edition, Knoxford Exxon Podcast, Chase Barnum, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio here with you today. A lot to talk about, probably to the point that uh, the men's NCAA tournament, we'll talk about a little bit toward the end of the show, but some Ole Miss related items to uh, to get to first here with you. No, the, uh, the OEP is not dead. The Oxford Exxon is part of Blue Sky. We are expanding, we are broadening, we have the same team, same partners, the Craddock family, appreciate them as always, more than a decade uh in now we are simply in the middle of uh, some rebranding again they've gotten bigger we've gotten bigger so we are uh, all getting on the same page taking advantage of those uh those things working out a few kinks prior to uh football season when uh, more people watch more people view more people around more people in oxford all those things so uh, yes you were just seeing a simple transition but the uh the same team in place appreciate they them appreciate as that. uh as always for that so uh speaking of Blue Sky locations all through Mississippi, up and down I-55, throughout North Mississippi as uh, as well. Lunch specials, five sixty nine, dollars couple sides of bread, 32-ounce drinks, any size drink, actually, that you uh, that you want there. The big superstore is available in Macomb. Got a subway attached to that, bud boy. A lot of, uh, lot of options for you with Blue Skies around Mississippi. And again, it was in the Clark Ford studio. I am Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote, and the rest is up to you. You can shop that quote around. You can do what I've done, what I recommend that you do. Let's hop into a Clark Ford today, 662-257-1900. Great service, great products. Uh, Corey and the people at Clark Ford, they want to be your car guy. They want to be your truck guy. We'll have Corey on the show tomorrow at the beginning to talk about maybe some uh, in some particular things that you might be interested in. But uh, in the meantime, give him a call, 662-257-1900. Guest, join on the Campbell Clinic hotline. The Campbell Clinic is in Oxford now, uh, 2608 South Lamar Boulevard, Suite 102, just across the street from the cottages at Hooper Hollow. The Campbell Clinic provides full-service orthopedic care, everything from sports medicine to foot and ankle surgery to spine and total joint care to pediatric orthopedics, physical therapy, and more. To book an appointment, go to CampbellClinicOxford.com or call 901-759-3111. Walk-ins always welcome at the Campbell Clinic Monday through Friday, 730 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, it's kind of a rundown. Uh, Ole Miss baseball knocks off South Carolina two out of three over the weekend. They went on Friday. They went on Saturday. They uh, fall on Sunday as Carolina avoided the sweep. And uh, kind of interesting around the SEC. You hit this a little bit. All home teams won uh, over the weekend. Are we seeing a little more uh, little home environment there? It's just one week. I- I'm hesitant to say that in a couple different ways. But uh, I did find it interesting, including t- uh, Alabama knocking off Tennessee two out of three. But we'll uh, we'll get into that here today. The uh, the Ole Miss men have uh, turned down an NIT bid, one of several uh, notable programs that did that. We'll discuss that here in a second. And then uh, the women, they are a number seven seed. They are headed to um, South Bend, South Indiana. Do what? I was saying South. I thought you were pausing to try to remember where they were yeah. going to <laughs> Yes, yeah, South Bend, Indiana. They will face Marquette uh, out of the Big East in the first round. That's a 7-10 game. And then uh, Notre Dame likely awaits there in the second round in their home arena. They face Kent State, I believe, is the uh, the 15 seed, if I have that correctly. South Carolina, the number one overall seed, the undefeated team in the country, is the one seed in that bracket. So we'll hit some women's basketball here, uh, here today as well. And then eight teams from the SEC got into the men's tournament again. We'll probably do like a full bracket betting kind of breakdown tomorrow. We'll hit a little at the end, but I've got some Ole Miss stuff to get off to first here with uh, with today's show. And then uh, notable last night, the Ole Miss softball team knocked off LSU. LSU was the last unbeaten team in the country. They were 24-0. and Ole Miss uh, erased a 2 nothing deficit in the final two innings and beat LSU 5-2 to there to give LSU their first loss of the season. Rubber game of that series is uh, is this afternoon, I believe, at some point there uh, today in uh, in Baton Rouge. LSU ranked number two in the country. Um, and then speaking of baseball, Ole Miss in the polls for the first time this season. They are number 17 in the Baseball America Top 25. You will see nothing but SCT teams littered throughout said poll when you glance at it. It is it is uh it is a bit daunting when you when you check it out and kind of see what's ahead there from that standpoint. You know, it's like somebody yesterday was saying, yeah, you know, like I, I was on the internet. It was Texas. It was some Texas fans going, 
hey, they're like offended because somebody said you might go 15 and 15 in the SEC. And it's like, that might host, Cat. Like, 15 and 15 might get you a host once we go to 16 teams. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be the college baseball aficionado after one weekend. But I did, again, this year, what I did starting last year was once conference play started, I updated my godforsaken ESPN app. Mm-hmm. and uh, It does and suck. It's horrible. You have to log out, log back in. <laughs> yeah. And then but you, once you accept that this is what's going to happen, you, you choose a couple of curse words, let it out, and then you, you do it. And I tried to peruse series and of course you end up kind of getting stuck on some series alabama tennessee was kind of interesting it was fun uh, mississippi state lsu was kind of interesting lsu very clearly still working to find its way back it's too early to write them off and florida um, and a&m are damn good florida's good a&m's good um arkansas appears to be very good missouri's bad but boy arkansas can really pitch it um it's a tough league man i mean 16 and 14 probably will host. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think 16 probably gets you a host in this environment. We'll, and, and we'll get to baseball um, here coming up. Let's let's start men's basketball. Um, season ends Thursday night. Ole Miss falling to Texas A&M. And considering and relative to how they've been lately, they played pretty well. They lost a close game to, uh, to A&M there in Nashville. Um, A&M, who ended up... Uh, playing through until Saturday when uh, when Florida knocked them off. They beat Kentucky the next day and got into the tournament. A little bit of a weird scheduling thing. Texas A&M and Nebraska play each other in both tournaments, the men's and the women's, in the uh, in the opening game of the event. So kind of a strange, strange deal there. But nonetheless, um, we knew this for a while. This is not new news that Ole Miss was going to turn down the NIT. Uh, it became official Friday. Is that correct, Neil? Had a Zoom call on Friday. Yeah, I mean, it was official Friday. I think we knew on Thursday night when someone walked up to me and said, hey, there's going to be a Zoom call tomorrow. I mean, you're not doing a Zoom call to talk about the game again. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to be super smart to figure it out. Um, you and I hinted at it for weeks because we both knew it. Um, look, it's a couple things. One's not a hot take. One might be a hot take. Real quick, by the way, Ole Miss not alone here. The uh, the ma- the major programs also turning down NIT bids: St. John's, Pitt, Memphis, Indiana, and Oklahoma. Yeah, so that's where I was going. So hot take: the one that's not a hot take is when the words coming out of your mouth after an SEC tournament loss is, "Well, they played hard." That that's a sign of where the season went. That that's a given, right? That they played hard. That the effort was noteworthy is a sign of where the season went. Two and nine down the stretch. Two wins over Missouri. Didn't beat anybody else. Couldn't rebound at all. It got you killed. But you definitely played hard on Thursday night. They played really hard. I'll give them that to the yeah. end. I mean, to a point where they cut it to three or four, and I was like, whoa, this is, this is interesting. But you weren't going anywhere, and everyone knew it. And once it was over, it was over. That that team didn't want to go to the NIT. Now, here's the hot take. I may agree with you. Go ahead. If you keep practicing and you keep playing, whether you're in the NCAA tournament or the NIT tournament or the World College Basketball Leftover Tournament, whatever they call that, the one that goes to Vegas. There's a CIT and a CBI. Okay. Okay. If you keep playing and practicing, you probably have to keep paying. If you stop playing and you stop practicing, you probably can stop paying. Which means, and no one has told me this, this is Neil guessing, but I think I'm on to something. You don't think it's an annual amount no matter how long it goes? That there is a set number of months that it is irrelevant to season length? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But if you stop practicing and you stop playing, you can stop paying. And if you stop paying, you can bankroll that money for the next group. Because Ole Miss is going to add as few as nine new faces and as many as 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I think you and I both believe there is a world where – there is a real world where Juju – Brakefield and Nunez are the only remaining players on the roster. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there's a real world where one or two of those guys aren't there. Mm -hmm. I mean, none of those, in my opinion, none of the three are definite. So, I mean, it's possible that it's, I don't think this is likely, but it's possible that it's the two kids that have signed and then 11 more dudes. Which, wow, what a look that would be. Um, it's just that, and that's not about Ole Miss. That's just college basketball. I mean, the portal officially opens. Sure. Agreed. Yes. I stand corrected. Um, you know, you're going to, I wrote about this in 10 Thoughts. It's up at rebelgrove.com. If you don't subscribe, now would be a great time to subscribe. Spring football's coming around. Baseball's in conference play. You've got the uh, basketball portal going on. The football portal's around the corner. We'll talk about uh, spring football and stuff some this week and why you don't want us to do a depth chart. As much as that's the running joke at rebelgrove.com, you don't, you don't want a depth chart. But you're going to read a lot about contact over the next few days. The fact that a school contacts a player is it's just not even noteworthy. It's not newsworthy. I'm not sure it's noteworthy. Because everyone at this point, literally every program, including the ones that right now are contending for national championships in the NCAA tournament, they have people that are just contacting everyone. Just putting out feelers. Hey, touch and base. How's it going? Because you don't really know how many guys you're going to have to take out of the portal. You don't know what the portal price is going to be. You don't know how many um, high-level guys you can get, how many role guys you're going to have to get. You just don't know how that's going to work. But the portal is going to be super active starting today with a lot of contact. And then you try to get guys to campus. I wrote this in 10 Thoughts. I think it's no newsworthy and noteworthy when a guy comes to campus. That means he's actually really considering you. Um, but the whole contact, Ole Miss contacted player X. Okay. When 50 others did too, it, okay. It, do, it doesn't mean anything. It just means that you're doing your due diligence. And pretty much everybody out there right now is doing their due diligence. Every, every SEC program, for example, including Vanderbilt now with Chris Mack, they're going to be doing their due diligence and t just reaching out to everyone in the portal. So here's my thing. And you guys can make fun of me. It's fine. I get it. I'm typically a little more of the sentimental type here uh, when it comes to college athletics. I, I think two things are accurate. One is, from the standpoint of getting ready for next season, Ole Miss is doing the correct thing. The portal opens today. You get busy. You're not dealing with anything else. You're trying to fill the roster. And, and the ultimate goal that you have of reaching the NCAA tournament all of your attention being on the portal and retention or not retention or whatever is the way to go. Makes sense. No problems there. I get why they do it. And this is not even necessarily an Ole Miss thing or a basketball thing. This is a this is a college sports thing. And I'm kind of thinking about all the way around and including with this playoff now where, yeah, by the way, Chris Mack, uh, that is not, I don't think, happening. I think that was a fake account we all got fooled on oh, yesterday. Okay. Um, but... I think this plays in football too. You got this 12 team playoff coming. You've got a lot of teams, or a lot. You got 20, 25 teams who believe they can make this playoff, something like that. Maybe a little more if you want fandom to really come in here. Neil, am I, am I crazy off here that when you opt, it, it, this, you know, the NIT is an acceptable tournament. It's not like the CBI or the CIT or whatever. I mean, it's at least ingrained in our consciousness, if you will. Are we into a point where the off season is the actual season and the games are almost secondary to set up an off season? Does that make sense? Like we are given, we're, we're primed in this right now in 2024, whether it be football teams that are out of the playoff race this fall, once they believe they should have been and whatever. And, you know, we've talked about this. Do they keep going? What happens? How do you keep transfers engaged? All those kind of things. I don't know. I, I, like I said, I completely get it. And then I also kind of sit here and go, isn't the point to play freaking games? Isn't that actually what we're doing is playing games? Supposedly. We focus so much more on the offseason and the build and the, the business side of it that I'm not sure games aren't technically secondary right now in the major sports. I hadn't thought about it that way. I think the NIT's dead. I think you see that. Um, 
And and that's probably true. I mean, I, I get that. I, I am contending that. I will say But this. my point is, and again, I'm not blaming Chris Beard. I'm not. This is not about that. But the public reasons given is, well, we got some stuff going on. The answer is the NIT doesn't really matter and we don't give a crap. Because if you were in the NCAA tournament, any of the personal reasons wouldn't have mattered and you'd be playing on Tuesday. Yeah, of course. 100%. I mean, he mentioned Jamarian Sharp. Who's going he through hell, and I feel for it, and I get it. He is. He mentioned a couple of academic things. Um, but if they were in the NCAA tournament today getting sent to Salt Lake City, everybody would be going. Mm-hmm. And and so it's – and for the record, I'm not, I don't blame them for not going to the NIT. If, if <clears throat> you're better off spending that time sure. working the pool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is where the bowl games that aren't playoff games are going, by the way. This is where they're going. Yeah, I guess this that's is, my point. It's like we, we have yeah. a certain goal, and if you miss it, it's weird next year. Who gives yes. a damn moving on? 100%. And so it's one of the things I'm watching for in football season this coming season. Unlike basketball, where you can at least go, hey, like Andy's team, right? Mm-hmm. They were 4-5 and five at one point in the American. But he was able to go, hey, we can still get in. We win our tournament, Right. If we can just get well, there's no football tournament. The SEC doesn't have a tournament in football, so if you start one and three, you're done. How do you get guys to keep playing? What do guys go? Hey, I got some academic stuff. Got sick uncle. I'm done. I mean, other than okay, well, we're not going to pay your NIT money. I mean, your NIT, your NIL money, or whatever we call it. That's that's where this is going, man. Where we're going is the. There will, there will be 12 – it won't happen in one year, but it will happen over the – in my opinion, over the course of a very short period of time where they're already expanding to 14 teams. If you're not one of those 14 teams, you shut it down. Especially at the Power Four level. If you're in the SEC and the Big Ten and you don't make the playoff, are you really going to – are you really going to keep things rolling for another month so that you can go to the Music City Bowl? I don't think so. How many guys will opt out of the Music City Bowl? 30? And maybe that's maybe that's just where things go. Things change. Life changes. We go through stages in life. Um, just because something's true on a Monday doesn't mean it's true on Wednesday. Just because something happened in 2015 doesn't mean it'll happen in 2025. Sure. You know, so stuff changes. But, yeah, look. There was a time not so long ago when teams like Ole Miss with the first-year head coach would have jumped at the NIT. And now it's an afterthought, and it's been an afterthought for weeks. This was not a Thursday-slash-Friday revelatory thing. And this is not me minimizing what's happening to Jamarian Sharp in the least, not even, in, not even a little bit. But this decision was made long before that became public. I mean, we knew this three weeks ago. That hey, this team's not going. If 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 it ends up in the NIT, they'll say no. And it's I think it's that oddity is is mentioned in the stream. It's that these are two different things. This isn't the you know in football we're talking about the team that's preseason number ten that loses three games by mid October and goes ah the hell with it. It, it. We 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 can't do what we thought. This Ole Miss team is in year one of a build. But there is no real build. But you know what I mean. You're in your oh. one of our transition, yeah. and you stop on the season when you never had any real aspirations anyway. Like, I know Chris Beard says it, but it, in the preseason, we didn't go, hey, if this team doesn't go to the tournament, it's a failure. No, 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 come on. I mean, 20, 20 wins and, 11, and seven SEC wins was frankly about what we thought would happen. Yeah, well, now, it's a weird way that it got there because, I mean, it's, it's kind of a bizarro world that – that game I covered for you. I mean, I walked into the parking garage that night after they beat Mississippi State, and they were eighteen and three, five yep. and three in the SEC. Yep. Yeah, and, and a lock at that moment for the tournament. Mm-hmm. And then it fell apart. They didn't Missouri any- and, and L's the rest of the way. Yeah. But you know, it's it's the like, it's the interesting thing where you'd love to sit down and have a conversation with someone like Chris where it's not contentious, where you're just talking, where it's like, okay, I get what you mean when you talk about building culture, right? 
100%. I understand the point. Something that Lane talks about a lot. It's something that several coaches at, at, in Nashville, it's always the interesting thing about Nashville. I almost stayed around for a little while on Friday just because I'd had so much. I'd enjoyed just getting to visit with like assistant coaches in hallways and stuff where you could just kind of catch up. Hey, what's going on? You know, that kind of thing. Um, do you really have culture? That's not the right word. I don't know what the word is. Is, is when you're bringing in 10 new faces from all over the place. Is, is it really about culture as much as it's about – it's more about buy-in than it is culture. Getting guys to come in and go, okay, we're buying into what we're trying to do with this team. And maybe that in and of itself is culture. But when I think of culture, I think about like Auburn. There are guys on that Auburn team right, yesterday that won the SEC championship. They, they've been there for a long time. Jalen Williams has been there for a long time. Janai Broom has been there for a minute. They've had guys that have been there. That, that there, there is a culture to them. Their culture is kind of like, hey, we, we play a lot of people. Um, the backup point guard is a point guard. The backup two guard is a two guard. You, you, you buy into your role, and that's part of the culture. And, and, and they're very, very good on offense. They're very, very good on defense. That, that's, that's the culture of their program. I thought, I thought you saw some of Florida's culture yesterday when the center broke his ankle or leg. I um, was happy to hear that he had successful surgery and – He's out of surgery, and the what will be a very long recovery process has begun. But you saw them initially kind of get, you know, sick. To the they were all in tears. They're very upset, and then it took them a minute, and then they rallied. They they didn't have enough to. Auburn was so good on the inside, but they rallied and they got within a point. I think uh, at, at one point in the second half, and that was kind of the culture of that program. And when you watch Florida practice, they have culture. You see it. It's right there. It's, it's in front of your face. You see it. You could watch teams at shoot-arounds. You could tell which ones liked each other, which ones kind of didn't. When you watched those, uh, some of those early games, you could really see it, which teams kind of had something, which teams didn't. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't, how, do you, how do you even build that when it's 10 new guys, 11 new guys? I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. It seems, it seems very, very difficult, but... You're trying to do what Lane did and what he was so happy about with Trey Harris, somebody who's coming in with that mindset already established that you're looking for, that you're a team guy or culture guy or whatever adjective you want to put on it. But yeah, you're not building it. You're trying to recruit a certain type that just simply has it and incorporates and meshes with what's already there. I mean, it's a completely different situation than, hey, I'm going to go just recruit a bunch of dudes. We're going to build and we're going to whatever. And then, yeah, in yeah. three years, we're going to look up. Nah, the, the, hell, the hell with that. I mean, I've, I've got takes on that, but that's for another day. We'll do and that I later question, in the week. I question whether you can truly do that. Can you? I mean, Chris talked about this one day. Can you Can you truly? I, need, I, I should have gone and found that for 10 thoughts, and I meant to, and I just now thought of it for the first time. Can you truly know what you're getting out of the portal? And his answer was, no, not really. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can do a lot of due diligence. But do you absolutely know what you're getting out of the portal? No. You know, and like there was a player that played yesterday who I've heard his name as a, as a prominent Ole Miss target. He's not in the portal as of this moment, to my knowledge. Um, you know, I mean, if, if he leaves to come to you, it's only for money. And so I, how does that work? You know, I mean, those guys are highest bidder guys. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I mean, how much, how many, how many big ticket players can you afford? And if you land them, how do you get them to play together? Yeah, and I, continue I, to play together. And how do you make that appealing to fans? I, I, and I think the answer is, well, they just wear your uniform, and if they win, you love them. And if they don't, and this is the part you and I always get to, and I'm not spending any time on it today, but if they don't win, there is no fan buy-in. And that's where the kind of the danger comes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Alan says that Memphis and Arkansas are good examples of that this season in different ways. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll, uh, no, Arkansas's yeah. team, I watched them, uh, I watched them some on, on uh, Thursday when they played South Carolina because they won on Wednesday night. I didn't go to the Wednesday night games. I, just, I started to go, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. And so on – Thursday, I got up and, and got to the arena in time for tip of LSU-Mississippi State, which was a really fun game, by the way. And then I watched 
Arkansas, South Carolina, and then, of course, I stayed for the Ole Miss game and, and did my job. But that Arkansas team has talent, Jace. It's not that they're an untalented group. They've got two or three bigs that have some skill. Uh, they have guys who can shoot it. Trevon Brazil has a, as pretty a shot as anybody in, in, in the league. They've got guards who can play. They've got veteran guys like Devo Davis, who has won. A, I mean, all jokes aside, has been a part of some really big wins at, at Arkansas. He was part of an Elite Eight run. He was part of a Sweet 16 run. They beat Kansas last March. Yet they didn't get, it did not mesh at it all. It was a portal failure with nothing to do with talent. 100%. And if you looked at it last year when they were landing these guys in the portal, people were like, went, hey. Ooh. Like Blake Lovell, who really knows SEC basketball. Blake's really good. Southeastern 14. He and Chris Lee do a great job. Blake thought Arkansas was a contender based on their roster. And it just did not come together at all. Yeah. So I, it's, it's, it's fascinating, really, to me. Yeah. Credit to Lane. Pulled it off last year. We'll see if he can do it again. Uh, podcast brought to you by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend times in our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, what are you going to do the time with? What are you making of that? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you. Make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you. You can do more of it. If you get therapy, you uh, get somebody who doesn't have any preconceived notions. They somebody, you know, not friends, not family. People who bring their emotional elements into your conversation. It's just for you. It's about you. It's for you. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, switch therapists at any time, video on or off, whatever you need to make it. Learn how to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MPW today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MPW. Are you retiring soon? How long should you wait to take Social Security? What accounts should you pull from first? Are you already retired? Should you consider Roth conversions? These are just some of the questions that can only be answered with a personalized retirement income plan. Andrew Sego with Sego Wealth Management specializes in helping folks just like you come up with their retirement game plan. So uh, whether you meet at his office in Collierville or pre prefer Zoom from anywhere, schedule a free discovery meeting, see what they can do for you. It's rebelsretire.com. Stress out about the rebels, but not your money. Rebelsretire.com. Brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great products and services. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call a Southern, 662-429-4429. College Corner is in uh, two locations in Jackson, one in Oxford, it's baseball season. If you're looking for uh, the latest Ole Miss baseball gear or uh, other gear, they've got it at uh, the College Corner in Oxford. It's more than 4,000 square feet of the best Rebel gear in the Oxford Commons right off of Sisk Avenue. You can also check them out at collegecornerstore.com. And we're brought to you by uh, Argent Wealth, formerly Pinnacle Wealth. Argent Wealth is based in Ridgeland, Mississippi, represents clients in more than 20 states. Argent provides detailed specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much, much more. At Argent, investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Argent will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan built just for you. At Argent, um, it's, you can get in touch with them at My Argent Wealth is what I was looking for. MyArgentWealth.com. So, uh, women, again, number uh, number seven seed. They're in South Bend. Uh, just a little primer because I, I, I made this post on the message board this morning. I get that probably a good bit of our audience is not overly familiar with NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. The, uh, the top four seeds all host the first two rounds of the NCAA Tournament. So, Nobody got screwed for playing on a home site. That's just the way it works in the women's game. It, it, honestly, it's something they need to change if there becomes more parity moving forward because it's something that happened for a long time because, frankly, those top four seeds weren't going to lose most of the time. It saved on travel. It saved on a lot of different logistical things in that way, and that's just how they did it. 
So, you know, last year, I mean, Ole Miss being one of them, they got some upsets, they got some things. It probably could move it to more of a men's type bracket as uh, as those things move forward. But when they get to the 16, they have two Albany brackets and they have two Portland brackets, and that's the way they play it. So it's not like the men's tournament. Again, top four seeds host, and that is why uh, it came out like that yesterday. I saw some teeth gnashing, but just from looking at the numbers, Ole Miss uh, – Ended up about where the metrics said they would end up. I know they finished third in the SEC, but the SEC did not have um, a lot of sort of that four, five, six range of, uh, of talent inside the league from a team standpoint. South Carolina, the number one overall seed. LSU probably should have been a two. They're a three. I'll get to that in a second. And then uh, Ole Miss a seven. Some other teams got in on down line. A&M, Alabama, Vanderbilt for sure. Maybe somebody else. I don't know, but that's what I saw. Um, when I was glancing at it, I saw the the, the state women are hosting a uh, a WNIT game or a WBIT game or whatever they call it for the the women. Do but live show, It'd be fun. Good, yeah, did that. I don't know. I, I was having fun on Twitter last night. I poked state people just to get a little get a little get a little fun going. I, I had a good time last night. So, um, point being, Ole Miss had a thirty six net. They ended up with a seven seed. That seems. About right. I mean, you know, I kind of look at it and go, I think you got benefited a little from your number three spot. Um, Marquette, I did at least look at them this morning, 23-8 and eight overall, 11-7 and seven in the Big East. Three of their eight losses were getting annihilated by UConn, which probably happens a good bit in the Big East. Um, but that is three of their losses. They had a loss to Creighton, had a loss to Villanova. They had at least one loss to St. John's, maybe two, but that was the um, – the majority there, don't ask me to break them down. I have no idea. But uh, but Ole Miss, tough two seed. Uh, probably a better two seed than even Stanford was last year. I think that was probably a little better matchup for Ole Miss when they got to the Cardinal um, there in the second round. So they they got no favors, but they are in South Bend. They get a shot. Marquette first. Uh, they're out of Wisconsin. And then uh, Notre Dame waiting in round two as long as Notre Dame uh, dispatches of Kent State. There, the, uh, the the announcer last night, I, I flipped it on and I was watching the selection show, and she was really struggling with names. She said uh, the Golden Flash at first did not put a put a plural on flashes, and then three different times said Holly Cross instead of Holy Cross, and it was like, no, it's Holy, it, it, it's 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 definitely Holy Cross. That is uh, <laughs> oh, Holly God. Cross might play for Holy Cross, but it is Holy Cross <laughs> if you're saying the no. uh, All character. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> um, so anyway, but I, I'll tell you, and I, I, I look, I, you can say what you want to. I get it, and like the people who go, nope, 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 fair, put them on the line, whatever. I, I, I okay. I agree with Jason McIntyre, which I typically don't do. He usually gets on my last damn nerve, but he said this yesterday. Iowa should have gotten the Duke treatment in men's basketball. LSU being the three in Iowa's bracket is one of the dumber things the women's basketball committee could have ever done. Separate them, get them all to the final four and get your damn views. What are you doing? I told you this all along. You fix that thing where you get South Carolina, LSU and, and Iowa in the tournament along with somebody. I don't care. Anybody. And let them get you. Yeah, you, you, USC because Juju Watkins is kind of a draw. They're a one seed. Put SC on the other side. Awesome. Fair enough. There you go. They gave Iowa like the bracket from hell. It's like, what are you doing? They're gonna have to. They've got UCLA, a really good two, and then they're gonna have to play LSU in the Elite Eight. Chase, I've told you this. I've told you this. The the. Mainstream America loves Caitlin Clark. That sport does not love her. They, they, I mean, they resist. She does not check the boxes. Everybody can get mad at me. Get mad at me all you want. I don't care. I'll take it. Bring it to me. Send it to me. They, she does not check boxes in that sport. And it's why that sport's doomed. It's doomed. It's never going to be a big, big deal year round. It's not. Because they, you've got her. Come on. She, I, I, I guess I am frustrated her. with with the daughter, with actually finding it kind of fun, with following it. Like it, it has never had a bigger opportunity, and all you needed was a little bit of finagling here to set up and marring upsets or anything crazy. A really, really good two weeks, like a really good two weeks. Yeah. And instead, LSU or Iowa is out before your final four. In some ways, you have the potential to once again. Up, up the men, yeah. Get 
most of the attention because the men's teams are all these renegade teams that nobody really knows who they are. Mm -hmm. You've got a chance. You've got a, a, you've got a couple of players, and frankly, one of them is not going to make the Final Four now. You've got a couple of players that are immediately noticeable. And you've made yeah. sure that one of them's going Caitlin to Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Frankly, the two most pro the three most prominent women's players in the country are Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, and Juju Watkins. Those are the top three. It's not somebody for South Carolina because they're kind of the Alabama of it, where they're just a machine yeah. from a roster wide standpoint. And you are guaranteeing that one of those is not making the final four. It's a mistake. It's really stupid. It, I think it is. I mean, and I'm sure they would defend it with metrics and stuff. And I'd yeah, be like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You, you should work that out. Because your public, nationally, your normal sports fan could name even the coaches at LSU and South Carolina for their women's basketball teams much quicker than they could the men's. 100%. You could tell me, the average American sports fan could say Kim Mulkey and Don Staley way before they say Lamont Paris and Matt McMahon. Yes. I mean... Again, half of the eyeballs that will watch your tournament will go away when, if Iowa loses. Yeah. So you They're, give them this bracket from hell? It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I get it, but they play Chase Parham State in round <laughs> one and play Neil McCready University in round oh, two. Oh, I know. it. I, mean, I was watching when it got announced, and I went, hold on a minute. Like, hold on a second. I mean, yeah, had you just moved everybody down two lines and made this thing cake for them, I went, okay. I get it. It's all good. Oh, I mean, they they would have played again in, in my world. Those three teams are making the Final Four. <laughs> yeah, period. And then we let them spit out when they get there, but they're in the Final Four. Yeah, I don't care who wins. You're just going to play each other, okay? Capiche? Yeah, y'all are getting there. They did at least put them on opposite sides uh, than South Carolina. So there is that, at least. If, they, if Iowa yeah. and South Carolina both make the Final Four, they don't play each other until the final, not the semis. Okay. But frankly, I kind of like it in the semis because you guarantee it. So where would that Iowa-LSU Elite Eight game be? Uh, I got to bracket up. Hold on. I guess it would be in Albany. Oh. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know why I was curious. I was just curious. You think about going? No. I've been to Albany. Been there, yeah. done that. Albany 2 is the way it's 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 said. Iowa has Holy Cross, or I guess that's UT Martin in the first round, and then West Virginia or Princeton. And then, yeah, on the, on the back half, LSU and its, like, quad has Rice, Middle Tennessee, and Louisville. Okay. So, anyway. So the Van Lith girl at LSU will play against her former team. Uh, that would be true. Yes. Yeah. Look at you. Okay. Good job. Look at me. See. I, again, I know LSU. I mean, I want them in the deal, but I don't want them to lose. I don't want them to beat Iowa. I'm all Iowa in that game. I'm Team Caitlin. I want Caitlin Clark to go a long way in the tournament. She's to me. She's fun to watch. I mean, if if. I was in the final four. I will watch. If I was not in the final four, I won't. It's really. That I, I, I think it. Like I, I think I'm more out to watch Watkins, Clark, and Reese to an extent. Way much more than teams. Like South Carolina is almost boring in their roboticism. Yeah. I just go okay, sure, yeah, good team wins. Yeah. Yes, and the men's side, Virginia got in based off reputation. It, it's one way that it's kind of back to the old argument of hey, I do want some fun teams and whatnot. When you just go to the Power Five and go, yeah, sure, we'll let you in. Like, you get – w- we would all much rather see Indiana State than Virginia in this thing. But Virginia yeah. got in because of being a Power Five team with a lot of history in the recent years. Of course, St. John's didn't get in. They didn't. And I watched their game Friday night when they played uh, – who'd they beat? Creighton? No, they lost. No, no, not Creighton. Crap. No, they, they, East, lost, um, they lost to UConn on Friday yes. night and got that was a great game. For like 30 minutter they were slugging it out. With, and UConn's legit. 
UConn can kind of do a little bit of everything. That was, they probably lost their, well, wasn't Oklahoma the last team out, first team out? I, I didn't see, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But I mean, look, St. John's though is not a recent history team. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but that's a traditional yeah. power, not a recent power. Yeah, but it does have um, patina. Yeah. Who was trying to take, what, his sixth or seventh different team to the NCAA tournament? Yeah. They were good. They, they finished the season really strong. They probably were one of the teams that really got hurt by Temple knocking off FAU in the American semis. Yeah. I'd love to know that, what was going through Andy's mind when he looked up and uh, saw FAU was out and it was Temple on the other side. And went, hold on a minute. That, 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 that. My suspicion is that Andy looked up to the basketball gods and said, you owed me one. Thank you. Think of how many times he was a game short at Ole Miss. I mean, four times was one game short of the tournament. So this time, his team was four and five at one point in the American. And they turn around and got hot. The part that they don't get back was they lucked their way into the tournament. South Florida was pretty good. They were the one seed. And UAB beat them, beat them handedly. So, I don't know, you know, luck, luck counts in tournaments. It's my one take here today before we move on. Like I said, I'll, I'll, we're, we'll basically do a bracket show tomorrow. Um, also, I saw you and uh, Sis give a bracket challenge. People can uh, enter that. It is on rebelgrove.com for a link to that. That was news to me. I, I'm sure I will find out <laughs> to, what, that, okay. what that bracket challenge entails. I don't like okay. my chance the guy who watches 14 college basketball games a day. You're not in the criteria club at this point, Mr. McCready? I'm not. I'm not. I d I've noticed that it wins, but um, I, have, I have not participated. I, but my one take on this is in – I mean, I, I'm watching Auburn dismantle Florida. They win the SEC. I, I don't really – I mean, I, their net had to be good. How the hell are they a four seed and got put in UConn's bracket? <sighs> We're getting that in the Sweet 16? NCAA hates Bruce Pearl. That's all I got. I, I don't – I don't. I saw where Steve. Like if I'm Pearl UConn, was, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell are you doing? UConn has just, a horrid draw. Let me say this about Auburn. Yeah, I, I wish I had UConn. I wish I had the the bracket in front of me. I did it yesterday, and I don't have it in front of me. Auburn is the only team in the tournament, top ten in offense, top ten in defense. Really? Only one. Only one. Look, I, I watched Connecticut a good bit. I think Hurley does a fantastic job. You talk about culture, they've got culture. Oh, they do. In, sure. in spades. They're tough. Um, the Klingon kid, the, the big, is, is when he's on, he is a skilled dude. You see why the NBA loves him. But Auburn, has, Auburn presents matchup problems for UConn. Now, Auburn will have to play really, really well. But Auburn presents matchup problems for UConn. They've got the bigs who can hang with UConn's bigs. And UConn's guards aren't so good that they eat up Auburn's smaller guards. It's got a, that's got a chance to be a really interesting 1-4 game. Yeah, I mean, Hayden points it out there. UConn was a top five net last year, got a four seed. There's a couple spots here, too, where the committee – just completely avoided advanced metrics at all. Like you look at some of the, spe the, the the spreads between the seeds that a team got and like what their Ken Palm ratings are. And like if you look at Ken Palm, like the Final Four last year, you all went, yeah, that's all top twenty teams. Like yeah, yep. but the yep. seeds were all weird because you get a group of people who are bureaucrats or whatever that put this thing together and aren't basketball people to break it down on a more whatever level. And you get weird things like this. Um, and I'm sure in fairness to them that it's we hard. don't, we don't know all of the scheduling rules. Sure. And it's hard. And then you have something like what happened on Saturday where temple beats South Florida or temple beats FAU. Right. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. UAB is probably going to get in. We didn't have UAB on our board. All right, let's start figuring out where we're going to put UAB, and that moves things around mm -hmm. because oh, now they can't play because they're in the same league or they can't play or whatever. You have you have scheduling issues that come up, and things change. And 
Maybe Auburn had to move from a three to a four to accommodate some stuff. I don't know. Who knows? Well, it's going to be like the really trendy pick this week. Probably the maybe the most trendy pick in this thing is going to be that McNeese State, the 12 over the 5 with Gonzaga. And part of that is going to be because Gonzaga is a line higher than they should have been. They were a 6 seed that got moved to a 5 because BYU doesn't play on Sundays. So Gonzaga yeah. got moved up a line to play a 12 instead of an 11 simply because BYU doesn't play games on Sunday. Yeah, and that's what I'm kind of saying. The committee may have looked at that and said, well, what do we do? We, we can't put them here here or here so they got to go here I, i'm sure it's more difficult than we think it is we but you and i have never been invited to be on the <laughs> pretend thing and then you know it goes no. hash it out at, at saint elmo so i don't know i'm not anticipating that invitation did you put will in your final four now I did not put Will in my Final Four, but I did put him in my. If you told me it was an all all upset Final Four, I had him in that one. Hey, okay. look, no no joke, <laughs> they're legitimately good. They've got they've got legitimate players on that team. Take McNeese lightly at your own volition. You asked for UConn's bracket, uh, the, the 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 problem spots potentially for them. It's a really tough bracket. Uh, Florida Atlantic's their eight, Northwestern's their nine, San Diego State five, UAB twelve, Auburn four, BYU six, uh, Illinois three, Washington State seven, uh, and then Iowa State, who I think should have been a one seed instead of North Carolina. They're their two. So UConn got no favors. I mean, they'll be okay all the way to the Sweet 16. They'll have their hands full with Auburn. And if they get past Auburn, both Illinois and Iowa State are capable of giving them an absolute battle. Illinois is good. I mean, you've got the the outstanding rape charge against their best player. It's a major story. Shannon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not dismissing a rape allegation whatsoever. But if you just evaluate him as a basketball player, he is an absolute dynamic player. And then they've got guards who can play. And when you have guards who can play, you can make you can win a tournament game. And Iowa State, Iowa State's exactly what you would expect a really good Iowa State team to look like. Athletic, they, they can defend, they they can give you problems. So, so UConn, there's no, nothing free about their their trip to the Final Four if they make it. The chaos bracket, and one of these obviously had the huge inju- injury, though, but this Houston bracket, and again, we're, we're doing this big time tomorrow, but I just am glancing at it, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. The teams out of that Houston 16 is the one that, I mean, think about this. The number of teams that could make a run, Houston, A&M, Wisconsin, Duke, Texas Tech, Kentucky, Florida, Marquette, all in one bracket. Yeah, a lot of good teams. A lot of good teams. Kentucky think- getting a really favorable draw yesterday. They're just so weird. I don't know. Here's the one thing that comes out of the SEC basketball tournament. If you're Auburn, and Stephen Pearl, to his credit, said this yesterday on the next round. They did a selection show. Two things. One, how weird is it that Alabama, Auburn, and UAB all got sent to Spokane? It's oh, I bizarre. didn't notice that. Huh. It's bizarre. Uh, but the second thing is, if you're Auburn, how do you sell it to your team next year that, hey, this thing really matters? Oh, it doesn't matter. No. You know, I mean, this tournament really matters. I'm not sure. It, it, look, it mattered for Mississippi State. It it mattered for Texas A&M. But I'm not sure it really mattered for anyone else. It may have knocked Tennessee from a one to a two. It didn't matter for Kentucky. They lost to Texas A&M, and they're, they're, they're fine. It, it, I'm not sure that six. I'm not sure how you can, as a coach, go, you know, we were going to be a seven. I would have played the scout team. Yeah. I, 
I, I guess I'm trying to think through it, who was actually benefited. And, I mean, I guess A&M got in, maybe moved up a line, did whatever. But, yeah, it, it's the teams that are already established in there. Because it's like you mentioned. The committee wants to just go put you on a line and be done with you. And not go, well, they won on Saturday, so let's go move them up to or down to or over or wherever at that point. I'll give you a great example, FAU. A lot of people, when FAU lost to Temple, were like, oh, they might have played their way out of the tournament. No, they were an eight. Mm-hmm. They were already on the board. And we waited till Sunday to get started. It, it, we couldn't get it done. So, yeah, teams just get started. What do we do with this Temple UAB thing? And basically they went, well, we'll just make them a 12. Here, they're going to get a 12. And they knocked somebody off the bubble that was on the 12. Yeah. Well, it's also, you know, I, whatever was it, was it the 10 line or the 11 line? If you win your conference tournament, you can't be in a first four game too. So they right. like they had limitations on where they could put you from those standpoints as you, uh, as, as you, you move through that. You couldn't send one of them to Dayton, and so you had to put them – Okay, we're going to make them the 12. The year that Ole Miss won the SEC tournament, they were the 11 seed? 12, right? 12 seed. Yeah, Yeah. so what it told you was that Ole Miss was going to either go to Dayton or they would have to put them in the 12. In fact, that's what happened. I can't remember who it was, but the team that was going to be the 12 got bumped to the Dayton spot when Ole Miss won. Yeah, Ole Miss Miss lost to Florida. Was it Florida in the final? Okay. Yeah. When Ole Miss beat Florida, they – they couldn't go to Dayton, so they just slid them in and moved that team into Dayton. Yeah. So, anyway. All right, moving on. Podcast brought to you in part by the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation. Spring sports are underway. Single game tickets for baseball are now on sale. And the 2024 football season ticket and donation renewal deadlines, March 31st. That's coming up. You want to get your priority points up before seat or parking selections. Call the Ole Miss Athletics Foundation, 662-915-7159. For further information, also, give to athletics.com. That's G I V E T O athletics.com. We're brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. John's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allow him to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. Get in touch with John, tell him what you're thinking about, give him some parameters, give him a budget, let him give you some options. And know this you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. Oxford's newest Greek restaurant on the square, Opa, is the perfect place to plan your uh, company dinner, a festive party event, fabulous food, great craft libations. Opa can accommodate up to 200 guests. Uh, For catering information, for booking information, contact Jeannie, 601-421. 7147. Also, don't forget about Rafters, Music and Food on the Square in Oxford. If you're coming up for a baseball weekend, uh, check out Rafters before the kids take it over at night during the daytime. Great place to uh, grab something to eat, grab a beer, watch a game, that kind of thing at Rafters, Music and Food on the Square in Oxford. Uh, We're brought to you by Service Specialist Staffing and Recruiting Agency, connecting great job opportunities to candidates since 1967. If you're on the job hunt, Whether you're seeking an entry-level position or you're a seasoned professional, they have opportunities across the board. IT, engineering, dentistry, accounting, manufacturing, law, human resources, uh, a lot more. They've got it. ability to help you at Service Specialist. It's always free for the candidates to give Will, Sydney, or Kelsey a call at 601-573-9242. Or check out their new and improved website, servicespecialistltd.com. Get the beautiful and healthy smile you deserve at Corinth Dental. Uh, Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures that will result in a beautiful, long-lasting smile. From routine checkups to advanced treatment, including implants and Invisalign, Corinth Dental is here to help you achieve your smile goals. Check them out at CorinthDental.com. Podcasts are brought to you by Prime Shrimp, primeshrimp.com. they got a lot of different flavors for you, including their soy ginger, their newest option. It's fantastic with hibachi-type meals. Put it with some other protein. Put it with uh, vegetables, rice, and more. Their signature, the own style barbecue, is their best seller, and much more. We're going to let you try a bunch of different kinds or get a lot of your favorites. That is code RG at primeshrimp.com. 25% off code RG. 
there at primeshrimp.com. Uh, let's move to baseball here uh, a little bit. Again, Ole Miss knocks off South Carolina two out of three over the uh, over the weekend. They win on Friday in a really tight one, five four. Was a very close game on Saturday until uh, kind of blew it open. They score eight runs in the eighth inning at that point. They had a one run lead and then. Uh, Hit a lot of home runs. Andrew Fisher with uh, three home runs on the day. Ole Miss with five home runs on the day. And then just a, a strange game on Sunday. They were outplayed. Um, you know, Mike spent his post game telling them, hey, this is kind of what you guys did some last year is you got popped in the mouth early, didn't recover. You, um, you just didn't kind of fight back in any way. You sort of got – not content, but you already had the series and didn't feel like the energy was up as much as might it would have been otherwise. I was just kind of warning them about that. And, and, and he's right, but, you know, in a 30-game season, it's not a 162 one where you just look up and go, ah, that's baseball, because every game feels a little more important with the way these weekends and stuff are stacked. But I did kind of watch it and go, I don't know. They just lost a baseball game. That was kind of what I thought about Sunday's game from that standpoint. Still a ton of positives uh, coming out of the weekend, but you know, yesterday there's a couple different things. One, and it's, it's it's not really making excuses, but the wind was blowing like hell for a second. South Carolina hits a ball out. The next half inning, the wind stops blowing. Luke Keel hits a ball to the wall and gets blown back in at that point, and that's a three-four run mix. They were one for eleven runners in scoring position. Couldn't get a hit. The first two innings, the South Carolina starter walked five guys, but they couldn't score a run throughout that. And then it was only a two-run game or three-run game in the sixth, I guess, fifth or sixth, when Mike was going out there to pull Grayson Saunier. I've never seen this happen before. JT Quinn's in the bullpen. He throws a pitch and injures himself. He, he has some sort of back injury. Mike said he didn't really know anything beyond that when we talked to him after the game last night. So when Mike walks out there, there's nobody in the bullpen. There's nobody ready. So he has no choice but to leave Sonia in at that point because he asked the umpire, he goes, hey, I've got a guy hurt in the bullpen. Do I Can I get like you guys in the game and get Simmons ready? And the umpire's like, well, no, because he's not in the game. Like that's not, that's the only way that works. So they leave Sonia in. The next guy hits a double, extends the lead and kind of puts the game away at that, at that point. So sort of a, a weird deal there. Um, at least Quinn's situation is not arm related. Again, I don't know anything else to what that was. But you look at the first two days; they really pitched it. Um, Dennis was good enough. I don't like him on Friday necessarily. He's just giving up so many runners. I think it's going to be hard to win. Um, but you have a huge advantage on Saturday. Liam Dole's the most explosive pitcher on your roster. He's the most talented pitcher. He's got a great uh, demeanor. He looks like a Friday pitcher. So I am would be very willing to move him to Friday if I was Ole Miss to set a tone in that way um, and, and go from there. I thought they did a lot of really good stuff. Um, it was a big weekend. You need to, you needed to win that one. Again, the, the, the ceiling – or not the ceiling. The goal right now is you're chasing 14 wins. If you get more than that, then great, and we'll talk about the gravy and the icing and all those things. But right now the goal is 14, 15 wins, and I thought that they played really good baseball. They are kind of feeding off confidence. They are getting some chemistry with the portal guys they didn't have early in the season. And then they've shown what is potentially a pretty deep, capable bullpen. I mean, David Eckert had the stat. I think the bullpen only allowed one run in 12 innings over the course of the weekend. So there's formula there. But I will also give my annual warning, because I'm just reading the message board and social media here. Calm down. Don't get on the roller coaster. I mean, I've been at Disney for a week here. I've ridden some roller coasters. You know, you, you, you guys, you won on Saturday, and suddenly everybody's back in business, and then you lose one game on Sunday, and then maybe you go to Tennessee and get popped, and we're firing everybody again. Just just take a breath. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. They, I, I, I promise you they are a better club than a season ago. Yes. I, you saw that on Friday night. Yeah. They would have lost yeah. that game Friday night last year. No question about it. Because, you know, they were on the ropes a couple of times on Friday night. I wasn't watching closely, but we were someplace where it was kind of on, and you could sort of follow it. And um, that game could have easily gotten away from from them on, on Friday a couple of different times. You know, I thought the a big moment Sunday, Chase, was in the first inning. Uh, the South Carolina starter was, was kind of struggling to find the strike zone. And he had two outs, then he walked a guy, then he walked another guy. And 
I think it was 3-2 on the next guy, and he mm-hmm. chased a pitch way up, way up. It wasn't going to be anywhere close. It was eye level. Yeah. And bailed him out, you know. And, and so who knows what would have happened if he walks there and the bases are loaded, but they'd already made a mound visit. They, 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 the guy was clearly, you know, he was scuffling. I don't know whether he was rattled or not. I have no idea. He didn't look rattled, but he was having a hard time throwing strikes. And you kind of bailed him out there, and then Carolina got a couple of runs the next inning and let him settle in a little bit, for at least for a little while. And, and, and I thought that was a, a big moment in the game where you probably squandered an opportunity and let them off the hook a little bit. But, um, yeah, watching uh, – Den- Dunner- is it Gunner Dennis? Gunner Dennis, yeah. Watching him on Friday, knowing what else is in the league on Friday night, I watched that. And was like, I don't know. You might be, you might be giving away. You'd love him on Sunday, and you'd go okay yeah. on Saturday. Yeah, and it is what it is, right? I mean, you know, they. But when he's got to go up against Holman, or um, Hagen Smith, or some of those kind of guys, man, you're just not. Look, you, maybe you have a night where you catch, you know, Hagen Smith way off, and you go for eight, and you guys come back and go, "Oh, you see," no, but I, you you know what I'm saying? And you you can't count on a lot against those guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even the guy at Tennessee, um, the guy at LSU on Friday night. His whole man is was. I mean, they just they're good. There's a lot of really good Friday night pitchers in the SEC. Duh. Um, I watched him and was like, I don't know. I don't know that that's going to work. And yet on Saturday, you've got what appears to be one of the better Saturday starters. And then oh, Sundays, are, Sundays are Sundays. I don't, I don't know. Sundays are games like yesterday where you had a chance to win it maybe early and then it got away from you and then they jumped on you and you really couldn't come back. The fact that your bullpen at this point is playing, is pitching as well as it is, has to be considered a very strong uh, improvement from a year ago where bullpen was kind of an issue. And when you got to the bullpen, Ole Miss was kind of uh, generous. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're throwing strikes. They're getting outs. I think Ole Miss is better defensively this year than they were a year ago. I don't think they're elite defensively, but they're better. And, um, yeah, it's look, at the end of the day, you got two out of three. And now you go to Tennessee – Tennessee just lost two out of three at Alabama, who I think is better than a lot of people think they are. Um, go then, get you know, one. Go get, go get one. one. Get one. And you're three and three after the first two weekends, and you exhale a little bit and kind of figure it out. Look, the league, the, if you're going to do the roller coaster thing, it's this is going to be get, get your Pepto or whatever stomach medicine of choice because you're going to have games that you just get beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the league's that way. There's one bad team in the league. Yeah, they suck. One team you can go, they suck. That's it. And then there's a handful of teams in the league that I know what the record's going to say. At the end of the year, they might be 18 and 12 in the league, and you go like, oh, they're good. No, no, they're really good. There, there's, I mean, LSU at the end of the day is going to be real. Trust me, they're going to figure it out. Uh, Tennessee, Florida, Vanderbilt, Arkansas. All of those teams are legit, and I'm probably leaving people out. A and M, all of A and M, those are legitimate Omaha te- teams. They, they, I'm not saying they'll all get there, but they all have the goods to get there. Every single one of them. Yeah, no. Look, you're you're going to Knoxville. You're trying to get one. That's going to be a really hard place to play. They're going to be a little desperate after what happened in Tuscaloosa over the weekend. They ain't. I give Alabama a lot of credit. I mean, they're in year one under a new coach, Rob Vaughn, there and. They're not overly good, but it's a veteran lineup. They got a couple arms. They can sort of get with you if you make some mistakes. I, I thought they played incredibly, incredibly well over the weekend. I ended up watching, I guess, the whole dang game on Saturday by accident. It came on late. Or was it last? Yeah, I guess it was Saturday. It came on late, and I was just kind of sitting there and flipped it on. And then way Alabama was scoring and playing, and I went, hmm, okay, yeah, all right. And that's a lot of confidence. Um. State played well over the weekend. Uh, they did. Look, look, LSU's still finding itself, so I'm having a hard time crowning the Bulldogs like everybody else is. But credit to them. They did exactly what sure. they needed to do over the course of the weekend. That's a huge series win for Mississippi State. Um, yeah. And they're playing better. They're, 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 they're playing with some confidence. They found a little pitching. They're doing some stuff. 
Um, there were three sweeps in the SEC, so three teams are 3-0. and Vanderbilt uh, really just hammered Auburn over the course of the weekend. Uh, maybe the surprising one is I thought Georgia was okay. They've got Charlie Condon, who's a hell of a hitter, probably the best player in the SEC. I like Goldstein okay on is, a, is an arm, but Kentucky knocks them off three times in Lexington, sweeps Georgia. They're 3-0. and Outscored them like 37-15 to or something over the course of the weekend. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Arkansas just completely annihilated Missouri over the weekend. I mean, just Missouri's yeah, not good. Like, like 23-1 to over the weekend, something like yeah. that. I mean, it, just it, just it, it, it's, what it's Arkansas, not ideal. What Arkansas has is they can really pitch it. And as of this moment, their bullpen's pretty healthy, and they've got some uh, – McIntyre gives them – kind of a, a, a swing arm that they can use in different ways. Um, and their starters, the three starters are all, they're all legit. I mean, they've got Tigert on Saturday and Molina on Sunday, guys that for most teams would be Saturday or Friday starters. I mean, Tigert would start Friday nights for a lot of teams. And then their their coaching staff and I, their pitching coach's name is, is slipping my mind right now, so I'll just give yep. Van Horn the credit. But they do a great job of finding those swing guys. Like Arkansas, maybe more than anybody in the in the conference, does a yep. really nice job of putting that together and figuring it out. Because I mean, look, they did it with Hagen Smith early in his career. He was kind of inconsistent. They still found ways to use him in different in different situations. I mean, he was he was a guy as a freshman they really only could trust for one inning, and now they've turned him into this guy who maybe is the first pitcher off the board. I mean, if we want to go ahead and go there, that's a possibility. He's got electric stuff uh, in, a, in a league, like I said, in a league fully. I'm going to look at the uh, situation for uh, the weekend at some point. I don't know. Neil just went away right there. I'm not – there he's back. Okay. Uh, look. I'll look at the situation for the weekend later in the week. Before we do that, uh, go ahead and take our final break of the day. I'll tell you about uh, Northeast Spark N E S P A R C service people across rural communities. Two packages: the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze, the one gig that powers the Clark Ford Studio. Your hometown team bringing you world class broadband. It's NESpark.com. 662-238-3159. Phone service, portal controls, network security, wireless mesh extender, and much more. Should get the best internet in Lafayette County. That's 662-238-3159. Neil, you've accidentally muted yourself. It's showing mute on the screen. Yeah, it's it, it's that's not even an internet problem. There's something on your actual thing. Just leave and come right back because it's showing me you're muted on the thing. It's not on the uh, it's not on the audio. Yeah, we'll get him right back. That's no big deal. It's it, it's fine. All good. Uh, yeah, I saw it, but I was thinking he was still was potentially coming through the, the, the mic, so I wasn't overly worried about it. Um, so give him a second. No big deal. That was not an internet problem, G, for once. That, that's been an issue the last couple of weeks, but that one wasn't. That, uh, it actually was showing on my screen that he had hit a, uh, hit a mute button there. So the timing was definitely pristine, though. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, no, I am not going to Knoxville over the weekend. Spring football starts back tomorrow, though. There, uh, there is, uh, there is that. So, can you hear me now? I can. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was telling you about Southern Traditions Farm. Uh, check them out at Southern Traditions Farm on Facebook or Instagram. The mail uh, have a mailbag coming to you on Wednesday. It's brought to you by Art Hayes of Sotheby's International Realty. 
Are you thinking of making a move? Put the power of Sotheby's International Realty to work for you. As a licensed agent with Sotheby's and a supporter of all things Ole Miss, Art can help you buy or sell in your hometown or anywhere in the world um, at no charge to you. Seriously. So call and ask Art how 612-805-5929 or email Art at um, Arthur dot Hayes, A R T H U R dot H A Y S at Lakes M N uh, dot com. Podcast also brought to you by G N M Pharmacy. They are uh, on South Lamar and Oxford, 662 236 2222. Also, Tyson Drugs in Holly Springs. They uh, deliver locally in the Oxford area and they offer med seat. Free prescriptions at the same time each month. Take care of you. One trip to the pharmacy, one delivery. Everything you need when you need it with G and M. So again, that number six six two two three six two 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 two. Uh spring football beginning back tomorrow, Neil. I know you're really excited. They're gonna give us show us a lot. We're gonna get like a full ten minutes of stretching tomorrow, and then we'll come back for interviews. Uh big day no, you, first media you, appearance. You might learn a new way that you can stretch your hip hip flexor. You can stretch your uh hamstrings, your quads. I'm sure that there will be um some of the media outlets covering Ole Miss will take those 10 minutes and turn it into 700 observations. Should be fun. Here's why you don't want us. Here's why, Chase, you don't want us to oh, do a depth yeah. chart. We go. do depth chart jokes. Everybody jo- jokes about depth charts. A lot of our competition does depth charts. That's a big part of what they do. We typically don't do them because I talk to coaches who are – will lose their minds over depth charts. You don't want you the fan don't want us to do a depth chart. Because those depth charts get out on rebelgrove.com and then they go to rivals and then someone picks them up somewhere and uh suddenly some of the depth that you have is gone in April because guys can get in the portal come April the 15th. 2 days, yeah, it's the Monday after the Grove Bowl. Guys can jump in the portal and if they feel like they've been buried on a depth chart and the, the tampering portal will be going. Ole Miss will be tampering rosters, and Ole Miss's roster will be tampered. If you, if you're a, a guy that you're like, well, it, it, it's it, it's. It, it's really back to the it's beginning of what we were talking about at the start of the show. I mean, it, it's just everything is changing in so many ways. Everything is getting so micro with players and the movements and all those deals of, of how you figure it out. I mean, I, I I don't know. It's 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 just reality. I mean, that, that that's the thing is I sit here and want to talk about this or that or whatnot, but it's it's just the way that that, that things are operating at this uh, at this juncture with it. Um, I don't know. I mean, again, a little, uh, little frustrating in a way. There's a reason. There's a reason that they don't put out a depth chart until the Monday of game week. You know what else is the Monday of game week? The first day of classes. Yeah. They don't put out a depth chart before classes start. There's a reason for that. Especially now, a guy could jump in the portal. He could leave. I guess he could transfer. I mean. And you file an appeal, and the appeal's probably going to get one. You could transfer in, on August the 10th and play for your new team on the final weekend of August. There's a reason they don't put depth charts out. It's 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 not to inconvenience the guy. Looking at it here, uh, last couple things today for the show again we'll do a ton of bracket stuff tomorrow that'll be the main part of tomorrow's show but um i i I do have one take this long beach state story dan monson fired at uh long beach state within the last week or so they told him to go ahead and finish out the season uh long beach state catches uh catches a little lightning in a bottle they win three straight games uh in the big west tournament i was trying to think of the conference right there the big west tournament they uh, clinch an NCAA tournament bird. So you have a fired coach coaching your team in the NCAA tournament. But here's the deal is they were catching flack yesterday. And look, there's two – There's again, we're doing the two things thing. We That's kind of the gist of the show is two things can be true. 
is the AD is the dumb one right here because if there's even a chance for this, just let it finish. You're Long Beach State. You weren't going out and hiring Nate Oates or John Calipari or something anyway. It was going to be all right. Let the season play out before you fire this cat. But then on the other side, everybody goes, oh, you definitely keep him now. If you think you were going to fire some dude, you don't keep him simply because he had a good week because Long Beach State was picked second in their conference going into the season. They were picked right behind UC Santa Barbara. They were a favorite to make the NCAA tournament. And then relative to their expectations, they sucked in the regular season. So that does still matter. Like, I don't know. I feel like we saw this story and we took the headline and went, woo, but there was just more to it where I kind of stopped and went, the AD was dumb, but he's not dumb if he continues to fire the cat. He's dumb because he set up a optic standpoint of not letting it play out, let the tournament play, and then make your decision from there. It just seemed like kind of a weird deal, so I don't know. Anyway. The audio on my end is, is not good. Um, yeah, we're almost done. If you're, if, you're go- almost done. if you're going to fire the coach, you, you fire the coach. He doesn't coach another game. You pay him what he's due, and you send him on his way. You don't run the risk of doing this because now you look you look like you fired him prematurely. You look bad. Whether you should or shouldn't, you look bad. You shouldn't have fired him. His team won. They're in the tournament. Yeah, I just I saw the headlines. I was asking Eckert about it yesterday, and I kind of went, I don't know. It just doesn't. Yeah, it didn't really. It didn't really fit the the, the bill there the way that it was, but. Nonetheless, we'll go through all the brackets tomorrow. We'll uh, we'll hit those. We'll uh, maybe even fill one out on the show. I don't know. I haven't gotten the whole thing set. But again, Neil will find out whatever is coming up for McCready and Siski and that bracket challenge here this afternoon uh, also. So check out that show. And then at Rebel Grove, again, you can join the bracket. You can compete. You can uh, do all those different things as we get ready for uh, the play-in games in the middle of the week. And then, again, eight SEC teams uh, over the weekend in the NCAA tournament. Um, LSU and Georgia, by the way, did accept NIT bids from the SEC. So those were the two automatics that are getting in from uh, from that point. And then uh, Ole Miss women, they're playing uh, Marquette in the first round. Again, a 7-10 game. We'll have anything from that as the week moves on as well. And Ole Miss baseball is in Pearl tomorrow night. They face the Southern Miss Golden Eagles, who are ranked 25th in the nation. They've got a, uh, a night start there in uh, Suburban Jackson for that one prior to going to Knoxville over the weekend. So uh, thanks to everybody for uh, hanging out. We appreciate you as always. And we'll be back with another edition of the show tomorrow.